Hi, in this video we're going to do some uh, deductible examples and uh, all of these examples we're going to be using an exponential uh, ground up loss, uh, you know, with a deductible uh, we call the loss a ground up loss. And th th this is, uh, I want to use, I want to uh, devote a video just solely to when you have an exponential ground up loss because it's so often tested. There are two cases that are very often tested. Uh, exponential ground up losses that we'll talk about in this video and then uniform ground up losses that we'll talk about in the next video. So uh, we're going to focus on exponential ground up loss in this video. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with an example. Uh, let's say ground up losses follow an exponential distribution. Let's say the mean is 1000 and we're going to apply a deductible of 100. Remember when we say ground up loss it means we're going to apply a deductible. So we got a deductible 100 as imposed and we want to find this expected value. The expected value of the loss given that the loss is greater than or equal to 100, which happens to be, uh, happens to be the deduct deductible. Now, anytime I see the exponential distribution in this context of, of uh, ground up losses and deductibles, my first thought is that the, uh, uh, it is the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. And that states that if, uh, if cap X, the ground up losses is, is an exponential distribution with a mean of theta, then the, the payment per payment random variable, cap X minus D, given that cap X is greater than D, that's the payment per payment random variable, it's exponential also with the exact same, uh, with the exact same mean, the exact same uh, theta uh, as the mean. So here I seek the value of a cap X uh, uh, given that uh, cap X is, is greater than 100. So I'm gonna play a little trick here. I wanna, uh, I got the cap X is greater than 100. So I'd like to see a cap X minus 100 in the expression there. So I'll just play a little trick. I'll, add, I'll subtract out 100 and add in 100 on the cap X. So it's cap X minus 100 plus 100. And then I'll group together the cap X minus 100 and then add to that the 100. So I get an expected value of cap X minus 100 given that cap X is greater than 100 plus the expected value you of 100 given that cap X is 100 uh, is greater than or equal to 100. Now that 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 term that I have in red there, uh, you're taking expected value of a constant 100. It's just 100. So uh, the expected value of 100, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, 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 conditioned on anything or not. The expected value of 100 is 100. So that second term is just 100. And now what if if I look at that first term, the expected value of cap X minus 100, given that cap X is greater than uh, or equal to 100, well, uh, that's the expected value of the payment per payment random variable, which I know from the memory property of the, of the, of the exponential distribution, that's uh, the expected value of that is, is just this theta or, or, one, or 1,000 here. And so my answer is 1,000 plus 100 or, or 1,100. Very easy to do. I hope, that, I hope that you will agree that that was, um, you know, it took me what, one, two, three, four, four lines. Uh, to, four lines to do. So now let's look at an alternative direct solution to kind of a uh, the direct method because not always will you have a exponential or, or uh, you know ground up loss. You might have to just go through the direct process. So let me just show you that that direct solution uh, in this example. So as an alternative solution. Uh, the expected value of cap X, given that cap X is greater than or equal to 100, is you integrate cap uh, you integrate X against the density function for the random variable that you're calculating the expected value of, and that's going to be over the uh, because cap X is greater than or equal to 100. That's going to be over the interval from from 100 to uh, uh, to infinity. I, I want to give you a fact here. This is uh, a, a useful fact that you 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 know. Uh, hopefully uh, you've seen or, or uh, you know, if not, then commit it, commit it to memory now. But if you have a density function for a random variable cap X and you're, uh, uh, then the density function for cap X conditioned on some event E that's, uh, that's happening uh, is, is the, the ratio here of the density function of cap X divided by the probability of cap E. And this will be true for all x's that uh, for which for which the uh, event is true. So in, in here, I'm trying to I'm, I'm applying this event e. Uh, I'm applying this with event e being the event that cap x is greater than or equal to 100. And so what we get then is that the uh, uh, the density function here 
for for the uh, the condition the density function for cap x given that cap x is greater than or equal to 100 is the density function for cap x divided by the probability that cap x is greater than or equal to 100 and this will be true for all x values greater than 100 that was the event that x is greater than uh, greater than 100 and then uh, we just kind of go through this uh, cap x is a uh, exponential distribution so the uh, with a mean of, of, of 1000 so the density function for uh, for cap x is 0 0.001 times e raised to the minus 0 0.001 x you should have that committed to memory uh, so that's what's going to go in the numerator and then the probability that cap x is greater than 100 that's the probability of this event uh, that's the survival function evaluated at at, uh, at 100, that value is an e to the minus 0 0.1. That's going to go in the denominator. So my, the density function for the random variable that is, uh, that is the cap x, given that cap x is greater than or equal to 100, is, is this density, fu density function, which I, I just simplify with, uh, simplify this way. So that's the density function. It's defined for x values greater than or equal to 100. So uh, that's actually why in that top integral, the integral is going from 100 to infinity. I kind of got ahead of myself. I, uh, I didn't correct that in the, in, the, in, the, in the PowerPoint. But the reason that the interval uh, that you're integrating over in that integral that's shown is from 100 to uh, infinity is because at the bottom here, the density function for cap x, given that cap x is greater than or equal to 100, is defined on that interval. Okay, so let me clean up the slide here. That's, that's just giving me the density function here that I'm going to take x and multiply that by that density function uh, and, and integrate that over the interval from, from uh, 100 to uh, infinity. And when I do that, I can factor out the, uh, the constant 0 0.001 e to the 0 0.1 I factor out and now I'm integrating an x times an e to the minus 0 0.001 x and th there's no other way to do this except just an integration by parts so I'm going to use the tabular method that I showed you in a, in a, in a previous video the tabular method for integrating by parts and uh, go through that process. I'm just going to go through the process that we've seen in an, in an earlier video. And uh, at this point, uh, I, I just make a point because I, uh, uh, when I scroll through the slides, you might not see what I did from this slide to that one. But uh, what, I, what I did do is I took the negatives that was in that all those negatives that were in the parentheses there and I changed their sign to pluses. But then I interchanged the limits of inter integration to uh, 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 to correct that. And so you get this expression that you then plug in a 100 and then subtract off what you get when you plug in an infinity, which you're going to get zeros when you plug in an infinity because e to the minus infinity is zero. And then do your, uh, go through the calculations, go through the, uh, the arithmetic and you'll end up with 1100, which is exactly the same value that we got on the first solution that I did in four lines. So uh, the first solution, I think, was much, much easier than having to go through this integration by parts uh, argument. Uh, again, I'll let you slow down the video if you need to and pause the video and look at the different steps. But uh, I'm confident I got the right number because I got the same number that I got the first way that I did it uh, using, um, uh, 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 using, using facts about the memoryless property of the exponential distribution. Okay, so now let's look at a second example, uh, again, uh, involving a ground-up loss that's exponential. Uh, amount of a claim uh, is exponential with a mean of 1,000. Again, a deductible of 100 is imposed on the policy. Determine the expected claim payment from the insurance company. Now, I, I want to make a comment here. It's a very important comment that... Uh, the, the, uh, when we have deductibles, there's uh, a, a, a taught you that there's three random variables kind of floating around. There's the ground up loss random variable, then there's the payment per loss random variable, and then there's the payment per payment random variable. So the, when, when you see a problem that says ex expected claim payment from the insurance company, it will always be the payment per loss random variable unless you're told otherwise. So always use the payment per loss as the random variable that you're, uh, uh, that you're in this case, calculating the expected value of. Okay, so let's look at the solution here. How I would do the solution, uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, we're seeking the value of the expected payment per loss, and the expected payment per loss is this uh, expected value of, of uh, cap x minus, minus 100 plus. 
Uh, now, here are the facts that I'm going to use, and that is that if x is an exponential distribution, then the payment per payment random variable is exponential with the exact same parameter. So the payment per payment random variable has an expected value of 1,000 because the expected value of the original ground up loss, cap x, is, is, is 1,000. Okay, so, so that's, uh, I'm going to start with that. The expected value of the payment per payment is 1,000. Now, keep in mind, I'm seeking the value of the expected value of the payment per loss, but I know that they're related. The expected value of the payment per loss is always less than the expected value of the payment per payment, but I know exactly how much to reduce the expected value of the payment per payment by. I reduce it by a factor that's equal to the probability that cap X is greater than or equal to the deductible. So in this case, the expected value of the payment per payment was the 1,000. I'm multiplying that times the probability that, that cap X uh, exceeds the deductible, in this case 100. That probability is an e to the, to the minus uh, 0 0.1. And so my probability or, or my expected value of the payment per loss is 1,000 times e to the minus uh, 0 0.1, which is this 904.83 number. Okay. Let me make another observation here that, that uh, I could actually also ask about the variance of the claim payment from the insurer. If I use this approach, the variance for, uh, of the claim payment from the insurer is going to be all equally just uh, equally easy to do as what I just did because remember the, the fact was that not only uh, was the first moment of the, uh, of the payment per loss random variable less than the first moment of the payment per payment by a factor of the probability that the loss exceeds the deductible, but so will the second moment. So I could, I could use the, that the second moment, I could calculate the second moment of the payment per loss random variable easily this way because the second moment of the payment per payment random variable I have highlighted in red here, that's the second moment. Remember, it's, it's twice whatever the, the, the square of the mean is, so it's two times 1,000 squared. And then the probability that the loss exceeds the deductible is still e to the minus 0 0.1. And I, I end up with a 1. Point, uh, what is that, a 1.8 uh, million number there. So I, and then if I wanted the variance, I'd just subtract off the 900, the square of the 9, 904 number from the 1.8 million number, and I've got the variance of the uh, uh, of the claim payment from the insurance company. So using this technique, it's very easy to to calculate uh, not only expected values but but variances. Again, I, I encourage you to uh, uh, strongly encourage you to 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 learn this this method. It's it will save you some time. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the alternate method, the direct solution, and this was, uh, again, uh, this is kind of what you would have to do if, or not kind of, this is what you would have to do if you didn't have an exponential ground-up loss, but some other ground-up loss that was not exponential, and uh, you'd have to kind of go through this process, or, or you would have to go through this process. Uh, you'd have to recognize that the x minus 100 plus, which is what's the defining expression for the payment per loss, that that's equal to a zero if cap x is less than z uh, less than 100, and it's cap x minus 100 if if cap x is greater than or equal to 100. So when I take the expected value, I'm taking the expected value of this function of of, of cap x. So over the interval from zero to infinity, I'm I'm integrating a zero times the density of cap x. Uh, which is, of course, going to be zero. And then uh, over the interval from 100 to infinity, I'm integrating in an x minus 100 times the density function for cap x. So that reduces to this. Remember, we, we talked about the density function for cap x already uh, being equal to the 0.001e to the minus 0.001x. And I'm not going to put it in here, but you, you, again, you're going to have to go through an integration by part. So it makes it look like it doesn't take as long when I just put the dot, dot, dot here. But this is an integration by parts that you're going to have to do again. And when you do that, you'll get the exact same number that we did, that we got in the, um, in the, in the solution the first way that we did it. Uh, again, if, if you were trying to do the variance of... Uh, if you were asked about the variance of the claim payment and this was your method that you were trying to use, it's going to get, uh, it's going to get horribly complicated. Uh, in fact, I, I just, uh, you know, I, it's just going to be very, very complicated. So again, I strongly encourage you to use uh, or to learn the techniques that we did in the, in the first solution to this example. Okay, and finally, let's do one more example. And this is a uh, uh, same setup. 
uh, uh, exponential ground up loss with a mean of 1,000 and a deductible of 100. This time, what's the uh, expected claim payment from the insurer? So this time, the ins if, if you know, what does the insured pay when they have a deductible of 100? Well, the insured pays the minimum of the loss amount and 100. So that's an X hat 100. So we're ex looking for the expected value of a cap X hat 100. Now, the facts that I'm going to use are the same facts that we discussed in the learning video uh, that uh, the learning video for uh, on the policy modifications. Um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. And that is that uh, cap X, the, the full loss amount can be written as cap X minus D plus and then plus a cap X hat D. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. And then uh, rewriting that, I get a cap X hat 100 would be a cap X minus the, uh, the value cap or the uh, uh, random variable cap X minus 100 plus. So taking expected values of both sides, I get this, this sort of relationship. Uh, the expected value of cap X is, is uh, cap X is exponential mean of 1,000. So its expected value is 1,000. And so now I'm looking at, well, what's the expected value of, of, cap, uh, uh, of the payment per loss, the very last term there? But again, I use the same fact that I've used before, that, that expected value is the expected value of the payment per payment. Uh, times the probability that the payment exceed, uh, that the loss exceeds the deductible, and I use that because I know that the payment per payment random variable is also exponential. That's the memoryless property. The payment per payment random variable is also exponential with the same mean of one thousand that that the mean of x, and then the probability that cap x is greater than one thousand. We saw this before is e to the minus zero point one, and so as before, we saw this before that the expect, expected value of the payment per loss random variable is one thousand times e to the uh, minus zero point one, and now substituting that back in, we get that our answer here, the expected value of the cap x hat one hundred, which is representing the amount. Uh, paid from the insured uh, would be the difference between 1,000 and the 1,000 times e to the uh, minus 0 0.1. That number ends up being a, a 95 number is what that, that ends up being. Okay, and finally, let me talk about what the direct solution would be. Uh, if, you, if you had to do this directly, then you've got to recognize that cap X hat 100 is defined to be, that's the minimum of a cap X and 100, so it's defined to be cap X. If cap X is less than 100, it's defined to be 100. If cap X is greater than or equal to 100. And then when I, when I take the expected value of this function of the ran, random variable cap X, I'm integrating X times the density over the interval from 0 to 100, and I'm integrating 100 times the density over the interval from 100 to infinity. Now the second, well, the, the, first, uh, the first integral, uh, the density function, we've talked about this before, it's the, it's, it's the 0 0.001e to the minus 0.001x. And then in the second integral, when I factor out a 100, I'm then integrating uh, just the density function from 100 to infinity, which just gives me the probability that the, the random variable is greater than 100. So uh, the, the second term is not so bad to do, but then the first term, once again, you have to do an integration by parts argument. And I invite you to, um, if, you, if you want to go through the integration by parts and see if you get the exact same number as the, as the sum of those two terms would give you uh, the 95.162 number that we got before. Again, putting the IDP there doesn't really do, do justice to the amount of time that it takes to solve the problem this way. So I'm hoping that I'm convincing you that uh, the, the methods that I'm showing you will, uh, will save you a lot of time using, those, uh, using that terminology and notation that we developed in the policy modifications uh, learning video. Okay, so in the next video, another very common example with deductibles is a uniform distribution. So I'm going to go through very similar examples to what we just did in these, uh, in these three examples. I'm going to do ex very similar examples, but I'm going to use a uniform, uh, continuous uniform distribution as the ground up loss. Okay, so I'll see you in that, uh, see you in that video.